Hey guys, it's John here from Monsters and Mazes. I was wanting to do a quick video on how I make uh, doors. I made these specifically for my ship inserts, but you could use these on white lock tiles or anything else. Uh, and this is what they look like. It's made out of all wood. Very cheap. So it looks good from all angles. And I use just uh, junk, clear plastic, the same that I used on my display case uh, as the base. So that way you can put it on and it will go with uh, wood, stone, or, or any kind of floor system. So without further ado, I'll show you how I made these. They're very cheap, very quick, and super easy. Thanks. Hey guys, you're going to need a couple of uh, different things here. The most important are these one inch super jumbo craft sticks. If you can find bigger than one inch, I would use them an inch and a quarter, inch and a half would be great. And if you do find them, let me know where you got them. I got these from Hobby Lobby and they were $3. So, and I use these for a lot of other crafts. I'll be showing some Wylock Taverns. Uh, tiles that I made with these because I like the extra wall depth. Uh, basically, you take one of those and you're going to cut the ends off of both sides. I did two inches on either side to make one door. Uh, if you use one inch equals five feet, that'd be a 10 foot door, which is a little bit unrealistic. But when I put the miniatures up to it, and I'll show some pictures. I really like how it all comes together, the height of the door handle and things like that. So for scale, if you're really anal about your scale, maybe inch and three quarters would be a good size for your door. So after you cut these, cut these to your length, again I use two inches, you'll get, so you'll end up with two of these. So then I hot glue them together. Um, I won't show you that, but it's just hot glue. You could use super glue, but I like hot glue because it actually gives it a little bit more thickness when you glue it together because it doesn't seem to squish out. So I like that. And you'll come up with something like this. This is hot glue together. And you'll have that seam, but we're going to put a hot glue bead around that and that will seal it all so it will look like one piece. So here's the finished one. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so basically from here, once I've glued it together, I get a Sharpie, semi-thick Sharpie, and I just roughly outline, I know I want it to be about like this, the planks, and notice I'm not measuring or anything, because then once I get it to here, I just three lines, I use my little miter and then I use that as just a guide and all I'm doing is gouging and I find that it's easier to start and go back to stay in your lines so and you're not trying to cut through that so then I do that and you want to definitely watch your fingers you just go nice and slow get a little gouge and then I turn it around go back first and get a little gouge. Then I use a little wire brush, which you definitely wouldn't have to, to kind of clean that out. And my next step, and you could leave it like that because you can definitely see the gouges, but I like to rub the wire brush on the wood to give it even more texture on this. I think they're birch, sti birch sticks or whatever. And also, I take a little razor and kind of do a V gouge out of it. So, whoop. I just very carefully do a little V gouge. That way and this way. That does a couple of things. It makes it that a little bit more, the indentation a little bit more prominent and less universal. Uh, it just makes it look I think more natural like uh, you know it wasn't made in a factory it was made by individual craftsmen 
and I use this again wire brush to kind of clean that out and you are left with that side I, I did the other side already so then the next step is to just take your hot glue gun and I got this at Walmart it's a super bonder I think it was eight bucks it's definitely less than ten bucks and I and it has a had a plastic cap on, on the nozzle I cut I just cut that off with a razor blade and this is super nice because it's super detail and you have that nice long piece of metal that you can smear stuff in so I just run a little bead and then just smear it in and then you have a little cleanup at the end but uh, just smear that in definitely don't touch yourself because that is hot so when you paint that up that will all look like one piece of wood just set that down uh, I just kind of, I'll clean that off. But uh, I guess I should have said, bef I, I use a little sander. Once I glue this together, I sand the bottom because you want that surface to be nice and flat. I, I don't glue it now. I wait to glue it at the very end to the base. But you definitely want this to be level and, and flush. So once you get to this step, you're basically done with the, the base of the door. And you're going to move on. So picture, this is what the finished product is going to be. So now we're going to do these little cross braces. And that's just coffee, a coffee stir stick, which again, I got mine at Walmart. Came in a thousand and it was less than five bucks. Uh, you can get these at Starbucks for free. Uh, I don't know if McDonald's has the wood ones or not, but I like these because these are super thin um, and not very wide at all uh, they're almost half of what a regular coffee stirrer would do I mean they're this would be good for something that doesn't require a lot of weight so for other craft projects these probably wouldn't be very good but when you don't want a lot of depth these are perfect so I, I literally just picked a spot eyeballed it and I said on my first door I was like, I want the bottom to be about there. So I ran a bead of hot glue and I put that there. And then I just cut, and because this is so thin, here, I'll just do it. Because this is so thin, uh, you just cut it, easily cut it off with the scissors. So just a little hot glue, eyeball it about where it's level. And I purposely put it over the edge because I don't want to have to worry about, oh, I wish I would have went a little bit further. This stuff is so easy to cut. I mean, it's just snip, snip. And you see that right there. All right, so then I eyeball it and I'm like, I want it to be below this curve. So I'm like, all right, I want this to be here. And I just beat it across just a little bit. I do the exact same thing. Just want it straight, push that in, all right, and cut it off, voila, and there it is. I do the same thing on the back, of course I'll line them up on both sides where they're, they're basically the kind of the same, I didn't do that great of a job on some of them. Um, I didn't get too anal about that, but you definitely could. Um, and, and once I did my first one, I used this as my template. So for future ones, I would put this down and I'd say, all right, I need this to be, this is where I need my glue to go so that they're all kind of, kind of the same. So I would do the same thing again on the other side. Um, and then once I did this, I'm ready for my tooth, my uh, door handle these cute little door handles here and this is from and I believe I got this at the Dollar Tree maybe Walmart but I believe it was at the Dollar Tree 
and they're just extra long toothpicks with routed, fluted, whatever you want to call handles. That handle. And I just cut it right where the handle ends with the very easy with a pair of scissors. Okay. I know you're, this is going to be very bad. So then it's literally, again, you can measure if you really wanted to be precise on where you want your door handle. But I'm like, all right, just a little bit of glue here. A little bit of glue here. Put that down and push it in. You want it to be straight, not crooked like I just did. Okay. And there you go. And I used, after it dries, I use a toothpick and I kind of clean the a toothpick or you might be better off on some of them. I found it easier if I had a big glump to use a little razor blade and just trim the edge. And you'll want to do that because once you base paint it, all that glue, the same thing if it, it's on your cross brush. You want to clean that glue off because it looks bad once you you spray paint it. So I would have all this glue cleaned off. But I just wanted to show you the process here. So imagine you do the same thing on the back side. Then you're ready for spray painting. And again, I used, um, I got a stir stick. And you can see where I glued these two. A little bit of hot glue, put it on the base. Oop, my, my handle fell off. Oh well. A little bit of hot, hot glue there. Put that on there. And that's how I spray painted it. Made it very easy. So my little handle fell off, but of course I would do a much better job if I wasn't in a rush. Um, so once you spray paint it, uh, then I use the Wylock wood technique. Uh, base coat the whole thing with burnt umber. And then I did streaks, kind of like the wood plank streaks of the terracotta. And then I did the honey brown all over the place as a highlight to bring out the, to bring out the uh, edges. So you want to show the highlight wherever there's an edge, just to kind of draw the light to it. And you want to, of course, stay out of the cracks as much as you can. So after that, the paint dried. I polyurethaned it and then I super glued on just a piece of plastic. This came from a, a toy wrapper. I cut uh, half inch strips and then I just super glued these on and cut them to size. It's very stable. Uh, the nice thing about using a clear base is you can set the door on wood, uh, you can set it on stone. It is whatever, it goes with anything. So it's not like, hey, I painted this as a wood texture, but I've got it in a stone dungeon. It's like, well, that looks kind of lame. Hey guys, I wanted to show you these doors in action. This is just the one inch popsicle stick. You can see it leaves kind of a gap on the inch and a quarter Wylock tiles. Uh, here's some unfinished inch and a quarter. You can see that just takes up just that little more space makes it a lot better. So that's a, the, basically the same rough door. And then here's one if you want it squared. So definitely an inch and a quarter is better, especially if you're playing uh, with Wylock Tavern tiles. Um, you never have too many doors. These back three are the DMG type. And I should just show you. They fit very well on the Wylock tiles. It's actually kind of how I designed them. And these are pre-made. I don't know if they're Wizards of the Coast or what, but they're just, they're pretty cool. But they're just a little small to scale, I think. So there's the wizard of that. There's the wizard of that. So that's a pretty realistic door. Oops, sorry. And then our new doors are very good scale of the wizard. So inch and a quarter, can't go wrong. Thanks.